cool there. Okay, we're gonna be. Um... Are you ready, Jesse? Yeah. Okay, it's recording. Okay, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. So our Torah portion is called Tetzave. Say that Tetzave. And uh, in English, you shall command. So uh, Tetzave is uh, if you go to the first slide. Uh, Again, if you're new to the channel, we are a Messianic congregation based in uh, Mississauga. So there's uh, there's some um, four chapters in this Torah portion, but chapter 27, which is the end of chapter 27, talking about the bringing of pure oil for to what to light the menorah. Chapter 28 talks about the priestly garments. The whole chapter is dedicated to the priestly garments. Chapter 29 talks about the burnt offering, uh, the, the perpetual burnt offering, they call it the, the, the lamb in the morning and the lamb in the evening. And in Exodus chapter 30 is the command to build the incense altar. So we're gonna be talking about, uh, primarily we're gonna talk about a little bit of a priesthood and we're gonna talk about the three perpetual fire. Say that three perpetual fire, meaning God said that we shall light this light, this three altar, this three perpetual fire. We're gonna, we're gonna see how that is related to each and every one of us. So uh, see, no, go to the next slide. This is the 20th Torah portion. Say that, 20th Torah portion. There are 54 Torah portions, but this, because we, we are in a leap month, um, there's not a lot of double Torah portion. In other words, they're not combining a lot. Why? Because we have an extra month. So there's 30, 54 months. As you know, there's only 52 weeks in a year. That's why sometimes they would they would combine Torah portion so that they can finish the entire Torah cycle in a year. So it's interesting. It's a 20th Torah portion, and it it always falls on Adar. Say that it always falls on Adar. Always falls on Adar. And why? Because it, it is in Adar that Moses was born. And it's also the, the, the same day, Adar 7, when he died. But on the 20th Torah portion, you'll notice that Moses' name is never mentioned. If you go back to the, uh, the 13th Torah portion where Moses is born, every Torah portion, his name is mentioned. Except, say that, except the 20th Torah portion. And, and, and you know why? Because go to the next slide. If you remember that when Moses interceded, uh, when next week is the sin of the golden calf. We're going to talk about the sin of the golden calf. But last uh, next week, Moses was interceding for the people. And said, if you will not forgive the sins of Israel, he said. Then he stopped. Then he said, "Just block my name from the book." So, so, uh, uh, so, so here, he said, if you will not forgive their sins. Then he paused, and if not, blot me, I pray, from thy book. So what did God do? God blot his name from the 20th book. If you look at the word book there, the, the, the meshefer, shefer means book, but they added the letter kuf in the end. So the, 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 the kuf is the 20th letter in the Hebrew alphabet. So God said, I'm going to take you out from the 20th book. Amen? So... Go to the next slide. So uh, we see here that the uh, the, the Tet Shabay really uh, has two meanings because the word Tet Shabay and it, it can it can mean you, you and you shall command, but Tet can also be pronounced as Tet which means it can also be translated you are to connect. Say that and you are to connect. So here, God is introducing the concept. Now, before God, before God was speaking to the people directly, and now God says, Moses, I want you to connect the people now. So he's talking to Moses, Moses. So there's a concept of a mediator. Say that the concept of mediator. So Moses is acting like a mediator between God. And, 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 and God was saying, Moses, I want you to connect the people to me. Right, and that's important because in, in 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 Judaism, in the in the faith of the Messiah, the concept of mediator is very important. Why? Because uh, there's only one mediator between God and man, who is 
Yeshua, yeah? So there's always that, that. Why? Because we are a sinful being, right? We need a sinless mediator, and that is Yeshua, amen? So we're going to see that more as we, we go on to the Torah portion. So, so here, um, the Mishkan, if you see the, the layout of the Mishkan, you see that there are, the first thing you see when you enter is, is uh, uh, this area here, the, the area, the outer court is where the Levites, the priests, and the people can come in. This is not, this is not restricted to, uh, you know, if you want to come in, you have to bring a, 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 a offering or sure. a offering. So if you want to draw near to God, that is the closest you can get. And then we have, of course, the holy place where the Levites, the priests, the high priest, and Moses, they can come in, right? And finally, of course, the holy of holies, only the high priest and Moses can come. Okay, so so what's interesting about that is, go well, the next time you see it, it's a pattern of really, so here, like I said, uh, level one is the outer court. Everyone and everyone can come. Uh, level two, only the priests and the Levites, and of course, Moses and Aaron. And finally, level three, Mary, Moses and Aaron. Go to the next slide, sorry, that's what I wanted to show. So you remember in, uh, in Exodus, when, when Hashem appeared before them, there was also levels of, there was also levels of entry, meaning, you know, the, 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 the people were not allowed to, the, remember he put a barrier, God said to Moses, come down, because I don't want the people to come close, even animals. And, and, and Moses said, the people are so afraid, they're not going to, no, just tell them. So he went down and told them, don't pass this, right? And then, of course, he invited the, the, the elders, they invited the, uh, all the firstborn, the, the firstborn was supposed to be the priest before the sin of the golden calf. And they were allowed to, 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 uh, to enter the mountain, uh, the, the, the holy uh, the, the mountain. And finally, only Moses and Aaron, in this case, Joshua was, uh, was able to go to even closer, right? So why is that important? Why? Because uh, what is the significance of that? Go to the next slide. Because God wanted God wanted the Mishkan or the temple to remind them of what? To remind them of Mount Sinai. Why is Mount Sinai very important? Why is Mount Sinai very important? Why is it because that is where God gave them the written Torah, right? And we're going to see later on that, uh, you know, Yeshua will, will, uh, will return and he will, he will live among us and he will be the living Torah among us. So, so it's very important. God is always reminding us about Mount Sinai. The Jewish people and all of us believers, uh, he wants us to relive and experience Mount Sinai to let us know that. Why? Because that is where God came down and revealed himself. Not only to one person, but to the entire nation. And God said, I want you to reveal myself to the nations. So he's reminding us of this mandate, this mandate that is given us. So, um, next slide, yeah, I think I think I have a slide there. So like I said, uh, 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 that survey starts with, you shall command the nation of Israel. Usually when Moses got the commandment from Hashem, he told him, Tetzava, I'm Israel. Here it, it says, and you should order or, and command, or you shall connect the nation of Israel to me. So it's Moses is, is not, it's not Moses giving the command, it's God telling Moses, I want you to tell the people this. So again, the concept, very important concept of, of, of a mediator. Hashem, Hashem is telling Moses, I want you to connect the nation of Israel to me. I want to take the soul of, of every believer and connect them to me. How exactly do we do that? Why? How, how do we do that? By it says there, and then the next commandment is you shall take pure oil, and we're going to talk about the oil, the purest of oil, and each and every one of us, deep down inside of us, there's a, there's a picture of oil. Say that there's a picture of oil. All of us have a picture of oil. God says, and I want you to tap into that oil. And uh, if you surrender that to Hashem, He said, I will, I will make you to be the light. 
like the menorah to spread it all around the world. So, so we're going to uh, we're gonna we're gonna go back to the to, to, to the menorah, but we're gonna talk about the priestly garments. Oh yes, I guess yes. Here, yes. I have the uh, the it said that we shall bring oil again. Oil is it has many symbolism. We're gonna talk about that in detail later on, but it's important for us to understand that that uh, you know we you know we we we're gonna talk about the three fires in the altar a little bit later. So so in the next or for the next slide there so you see there that he's talking about the priesthood the, the garment. So uh, why is the garment is the, the concept of the priestly garment it says there in Exodus chapter 28 verse 2 thou shalt make a holy garment for Aaron thy brother for splendor, say that for splendor, splendor. and for beauty. So the, the whole the whole concept of the, the nation of Israel to be the nation of priests, and we're, we're gonna see that that they're supposed to to be to do tekun ulam. Have you heard that phrase before tekun ulam? It means the repairer of the world. Why? Because what happened when sin came, God said, I want you to, to reverse what Adam has done, right? So I want you to be the light of the nation. So, so, so every time we, we, we do, we, we, we obey God's word, we do, we do, uh, we do his commandments, we are actually uh, bringing positive energy into the world, amen? So, so he says there, are you not his royal priesthood today? So in, in Ramban teaches us that even though the Ohanim or the priest normally comes from the tribe of Levi, but it is not so today. Say it's not so today. Today, every single man, every single woman, every single child, which dedicates themselves to Hashem's God, to Hashem's service, to make a place, to make this earth a better place that inspires brothers and sisters to bring them closer to Hashem, you are considered a Kohanim, a priest. Say that, I'm considered a Kohanim. But not only a Kohanim, not only a regular priest, but according to Ramban, he says there, therefore, you can even be a high priest. When he, when he said, you, when, when, when God spoke to them in Exodus chapter, I, think, I believe in 19, when he said, if you obey my commands and my statutes, you shall be a kingdom of priests before me. He didn't say, just a regular priest. These are you're, you're gonna be a high priest. Say that a high priest. So today, each and every one of us, according to the Ramban, when we do mitzvah, then we, we become more beautiful and more honor, honorable for Hashem. That is the concept of the garments. The garments that Hashem has given each and every one of us. That is our that is potentially to truly beautify and truly honor his name. So, so remember the high priest is the title of the Messiah. Remember that the Messiah is also not only the king, but he will be high priest. So remember the, 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 the tabernacle on earth, the Mishkan on earth, and the temple later on that Solomon built was a pattern that God showed Moses that was in heaven. Are you saying with me? So whatever was in heaven, Moses copied it, right? Mm -hmm. So if that is the case, that's why it's not say, that's, that's why it's very important. It's <laughs> very important. The tabernacle on earth was a pattern in heaven. That means in heaven there's a high priest, right? Just like in earth there was a high priest, in heaven there was high. Who, who is the high priest? Yeshua, Yeshua is our high priest. And the garments that Yeshua was wearing was copied by Moses. Remember, he said, put the, put a breastplate. The, uh, the priest, the, the regular priest had four garments, but the high priest had, had eight. He had four extra garments. And one of the garments that the priest we're going to talk about is one of the garments he's wearing, he's wearing a breastplate with 12 precious stones. In fact, today, if you're going to, they, they're trying to uh, to build the, uh, to create the uh, the temple clothing. Mm -hmm. To create that clothing, it will cost them 
close to a million dollars to recreate it. Mm -hmm. Because the breastplate is made out of precious stone. Can you imagine a diamond, you know, a, 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 a big diamond, mm -hmm. uh, an emerald, all those precious stones. And in, and in those stones are engraved the names, say that the names of the tribe of, of Israel, right? The names of the children of Israel. So what, what is that saying to us? It's saying that, you know, that, that uh, nowhere, say that nowhere will you read that the names were replaced. The names were replaced. That's why in Revelation chapter 21, it says, that, let's do Exodus chapter 28, verse 29, it says there, and then Aaron shall bear the names of the children of Israel in the breastplate of judgment upon his heart when he goeth unto the holy place for a memorial before the Lord continually. So, God, so when he comes, remember, when he enters the Holy of Holy, he's not wearing the breastplate. It's only when he enters the holy place, then when he's wearing it, it reminds not only him, but it, God, he said, it's a memorial before Hashem of all the names of the 12 tribes, right? So in Revelation chapter 21, look at, look at uh, verse 10. Look at this, what it says. It said, and, 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 and John was carried by the spirit on top of the great high mountain and he showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down from heaven from God. It had the Shekinah of God so that its brilliance was like that of a priceless jewel, like crystal clear diamond. It was a great wall, and on this wall they had twelve gates. Say that twelve gates, and twelve angels, and inscribed on the gates were the names. Say that were the names of the twelve tribes of Israel. The same way as the breastplate of the high priest. So, 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 what is that? What is that telling us? What is that telling us? It's telling us that. In order for us to enter one of these gates, we have to enter to one of the tribe of Israel. Amen? Amen. We have to belong. That's why, that's why uh, uh, Paul and, 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 and a, a lot of the, in the Torah is talking about us being grafted into Israel. Us being, being part of, we, uh, converting into the nation, converting into, into, into Israel. In Hebrews chapter 7, it talks about there is a, is, there is a high priest in heaven. Because remember, the high priests, later on, they became a political role to the point that it became corruption. It, it, was, not, it was no longer pure Levites or pure, sorry, pure descendants of Aaron that became priests. Anybody that had the money, because it was a position of power, uh, became priests. But then what, what Hebrews is saying, you know, you know forget about you know, the Heavenly we have a heavenly high priest who forever it says there in uh, verse uh, chapter 7 verse uh, 20 it says but Yeshua became a Kohan of, uh, by the oath which God swore and he said to him Adonai has sworn and I will not change his mind you are a priest forever so he's not only a high priest not only a priest but he's our high priest so uh, again you know talking about the special garment. Go on next time, please. Yes. So, so, uh, so the, the 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 concept of the high priest is what to bring tekun olam or to bring healing. Huh? It's a mediator. Yes, indeed. So again, that concept of mediator, right? The mediator, and uh, we are we are in this, we are in, we are in between heaven and earth, right? So, so the uh, the the idea that. You know the the, the 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 mending of the world. We are here to to repair. We, we, we can see that the special garment and and its symbolism. So in the uh, in the Hasidic thought, they said that the eight garments are there for honor and for beauty, which means that when we do mitzvah, when we do, when we do commandments, uh, what what they're saying is uh, that once. Sometimes your 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 it says there your intent your intent becomes your action because uh, because sometimes when um, when uh, you're not in the mood right but the moment the moment you you put on this garment your mood changes so for example 
I was, you're invited to a wedding, right? And you don't feel like going to the wedding, but the moment you, you, you start putting on the tuxedo, say that, putting on the tuxedo, or the moment that the woman starts putting in the gown, right? All of a sudden, say that, all of a sudden. The mood change, say that, the mood change. Why? Because all of a sudden, the, the clothing excites you. Oh, ooh, I look nice. Yeah. Right? So, so what, what God is saying, sometimes we don't have the, you know, uh, 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 we don't have, we don't have the passion. We don't have the mood for it. But, but God says, when you put on the garment, when the priest put on the garment, he all of a sudden gets excited. Why? Because he's realizing now, you know, he says, putting on the garment, you know, it, it, he puts on a very special, he's put in a very special place. Why? Because now he is, he is, He's working for Hashem. So if you go to a wedding, you, but you're not in the mood, but once you put on your fancy clothes and you come to the wedding, you finally begin to have joy, right? Wow. Yeah. Why? It's the same way when the Kohen Gadol in the Holy Temple, by wearing these garments, start putting on the robes, the belts, the breastplate that sits. The garments is reminding them that they will be standing before God. And they're reminded that God called you. Say that God called you. God called you. Say that God called me. God called me. To change the world. Wow, say that, say that. God called me. That's why when, when you're wearing that, God is saying, you know, when you wear that, I'm commanding you to change the world. To do this, this, that was a space, uh, again, that, that was an idea similar. Uh, so it inspires you. Why? Because when you start putting on these garments, the, 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 the priesthood, the calling starts to have the mood. Remember, this clothing, this clothing cannot be, it's custom made. It's like the suit. It's not that, that you just buy it from, from Walmart or from Moore. This is custom fitted. Say that's custom fitted. Every Priestly garment is size to fit. Say that size to fit. Yes. And these are not washed. In other words, if this if this gets dirty, it becomes a wick. It becomes it's cut and becomes. They wrap this. The, they wrap the kid, the babies with this. It becomes baby clothing, or it becomes a wick, or the wick for the menorah, because they have. They're not, not only in the menorah in the in the holy place, but they have in all over Israel during the feast, they have big tan, 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 uh, menorahs all around. So they need a lot of garments. They need a lot of priestly garments. So you can you imagine that if the if this gets soiled, the the priest has to discard it, can't wear it anymore. And he only wears it, listen then, he only wears it when he's ministering to Hashem. In other words, when he goes home, he removes this and he and he reach and he, he packs this meat. In other words, he cannot use this anywhere else except to minister to Hashem. Amen. Are you still with me? Amen. So again, uh, he, he was given over the, the, the coin symbolizes the same concept. He was he has a life given completely over to the service of Hashem. Uh, from the very early in the morning to the night, the Kohen works in the temple, officiating the daily and special services. He did not work in the business world for a living, but instead relied entirely upon the gen generosity of God. He didn't even own land. Remember, they weren't given land. They were just given a, a place, right? They were given the, the city of refuge but they never own the land. Why? Because they're not expected. They're not expected to plant for their food. They're not expected to work for their living. They're expected to minister to Hashem. Amen. So their, their role is to minister to Hashem, to bring people. That's why we, they have not, uh, so, so he said, we have not been called a nation of priests for nothing. It was to indicate to us that we have a special group. We tap into the uh, we tap into the, the priestly root. Amen? And, and the, the priestly con the garment, again, the, the concept of the garment is likened to 
beauty and splendor. Go to the next slide, Jesse. So, so you see here that um, every piece of the garment has a simulation that tans. Well, this one is not really, well, uh, that's the inner garment. But the pants atone for the sexual transgression. Go next slide. Do you have the belt? The belt is uh, about 10 feet long. And when you put it on, it wraps until it, it wraps around your chest to your, to your, to your heart. So the belt is, uh, is uh, worn over the heart, atoned for the sin of the heart. Go to the next slide, Jesse. I think I have uh, the tunic. That's a tunic. It's, um, the tunic is, uh, um, it's a long, it's a long, it covers the priest's entire body, atoned for the, the sin of murder. Go to the next slide. <clears throat> And the uh, the the uh, the blue apple, which is only worn by the uh, the priest, the high priest. There is uh, there is bells around it. Take that. There's bells and uh, from uh, pomegranates, pomegranates. So in between the bell, pomegranate, bell. So uh, that is uh, um, again, it's uh, the atone for the. The sin of evil speech. Evil speech. There you go. Really? Yeah, that's where they put the Pomegranate there. Remind them of the Torah. Go well, next slide. So there is the, of course, the breastplate. You know the breastplate. Uh, breastplate atones for the for for the sin of injustice. When when justice is delayed, it is also uh, a sin. Um, and then, of course, the, the, the next one is the tip. Tip, or oh, sorry, there's uh, there's then there's the there's then the uh, of course that's part of the breastplate. There's also two stones, one on the right and the left, which are the, the names of the, the twelve tribes of Israel, six on one side and six on the other. And uh, finally, the tip. So yeah, the tip. There is this uh, head covering that they wear. Uh, only the priests wear this. That's it. It's called the gold, gold crown with the engraving holy unto Hashem. This atone, atones for the sin of arrogance, brazenness, the sins associated with, uh, with those things. So again, so all, all of these is, is part of, you know, when we, when we, you know, spiritually, when we wear it, we wear it. Why? Because you are ready to to minister to Hashem. So when you wake up in the morning, you put this on. Spiritually, you put this on. You remind yourself that you have been called. Say that I'm being called, I've been called by, Hashem by Hashem to change the world. I'm his change priest. I'm his high priest. Whether you're a woman, man, or child, every one of us. You know, when 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 Yeshua returns, when he establishes his his, uh, his uh, kingdom here on earth. We will all be high priests. Here we will all be high priests. Therefore, we will have access not only to the to the uh, common areas, we have access to the holy place and the holy of holy. Say that we have access. Amen. Hallelujah. So. What's interesting, go on the next slide, Jesse. So uh, what's interesting is when you notice when the high priest, by the way, the high, the, according to the Torah, right? Uh, the high priest can only come once a year during Yom Kippur. But in reality, if the high priest, um, if the high priest um, is a righteous high priest, he can come anytime into the holy place, the holy of holies. But... Uh, you so you notice it, but when the high priest enters the holy the holy of holies, he could not wear gold. So that he cannot wear gold. He cannot wear all those fancy clothing. He can, he only he only wears the simple white garment, which is which is what the priest the normal priest would wear, right? So when he wanted to enter the holy of holies, he's the high priest, the highest level, and this is a lesson for all of us. Why? Because God said, you know, when, when, when it comes to, to atoning for the sin, the sins of mankind, it's not limited to the Jewish people. Say it's not limited to the Jewish people. 
So God is saying, you know, uh, you know, in, in the atonement of Yeshua, the atonement of the, that Yeshua provided for all of us is for all mankind. Say for all. So, um, you know, that's one lesson. And another is, again, you know, um, it's, um, you know, clothing, clothing can be, can be deceiving, right? Oh, uh, uh, there is a fine line, you know, when uh, they said that you will know if the person is rich by what? By the, the by his clothing, isn't it? You know, uh, by the clothes that he wear, you can tell whether or not this person is, is rich or this person is poor, right? So, <coughs> so that's why clothing is, um, is, is, uh, is where a person gets judged. And, 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 and people tell you that, you know, you are judged by, when people look at you, the first thing they see, okay, this guy. They look at how you look, how you stand. So you're, you're judged by your clothing. But there's a great temptation. Uh, that's why uh, when you, you, the, the, the clothing that the, the priest, remember the priestly garments are not cheap. These are expensive. Like I told you, the, 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 if, if, you, if, you re, if you recreate the, 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 the high priest garment today, it will cost close to a million dollars in today's money. Yeah, if not more, but that's a conservative, a conservative amount, right? But if you take out all of that, even the priestly garments are expensive. Remember, these are custom made. These are made from, from, uh, from, uh, from, uh, from uh, materials that are expensive so again so so what so so the, the so to show the people respect it should uh command respect when you see the high priest wearing his garment right when you see it when you see a high priest it was it's supposed to elicit respect right but the fine line there the the, the gray line is when people start to, to wear clothes to try to get respect, that's a different story, right? Because God is saying, no, you know, when the, when the high priest wears this, it commands respect. Why? Because he's representing Hashem, right? But, you know, like, they, like I said, the, the, the fine line, the gray line is when we use clothing in the wrong attitude. That, that is when you, when you try to say to a person, look, I'm richer than you, I, I'm more from, you know, and use the clothing to look down at people. So that's what, that's what he's talking about. Because remember, sometimes when a person, when a person, uh, um, when, when a person gets successful, there's a temptation to start buying expensive clothes. Like for example, you're used to wearing a $20 shirt you're, you're happy with a $20 shirt. I'm happy with a $10 shirt, not $20 shirt. I'm happy with a $10 shirt. But sometimes when, when all of a sudden when you had a lot of money, that $20 shirt to you, it's nothing. I, I want a $200 shirt, right? All of a sudden, you know, you start, you start mm, mm, making more money. That $20 shirt is not good enough. And then you make more money. Oh, I want a $1,000 shirt, right? <laughs> Again, the key to clothing is to display our respect to Hashem. Say that our respect to Hashem. Then it is holy and it's good. If the clothing is being used, if the person wants to use the clothing to command people to show respect, to show people how a great person he is, then God said that is not appropriate, right? Remember, like I said, the priestly garments are very expensive and he's not there to show, hey, you know, I'm a priest, no. But really, hey, you know, uh, uh, I want you to show respect, not because of what I'm wearing it, but because who I represent. Amen? Amen. So, if that, so the person wants to use clothing to command people to show them respect, then it becomes not right, right? I wear, uh, you know, then uh, it leads to arrogance. It would lead, it would, instead of, instead of pushing you to God, it is pushing you away from God. There are clothes that will, they said uh, in the Torah, they said you're not supposed to wear uh, clothes that are torn. And torn could mean that you're exposing so much of your physical body. And sometimes it attracts, say that it attracts sin. Certain clothing attracts sin. You, you know what I'm talking about, right? 
So then God said, let's just dress modestly. Say dress modestly, right? So uh, uh, if so, so, so now, so um, so again, you know, you you know, when uh, let's say you're wearing a nice clothes and they say, oh, you 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 must be very successful, and and if 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 that happens to you, all you need to say, you know, it is it, you know my success because of Hashem or because my parents raised me well or whatever, but you deflect, say that deflect the honor to you and return it, return it to Hashem. Amen? So again, the significance of clothes. Remember when you, Joseph was tempted, when, when Joseph was tempted, when, uh, when uh, Pharaoh's wife was, was trying to, to, uh, to have something with him. And what did he do? What did he do? He end up giving his clothes away, right? He ran away without his clothes, right? He took his, he's trying to grab her, and then, and if, if if clothes mattered for him, he would have stayed on. But he said, "No, what? You can take my clothes," and he ran away, right? So, <laughs> so again, the sage is saying that um, that sometimes, like he said, clothing, a uh, person's clothing is his honor, his clothing, even. His self dignity. The Gemara says a wealthy person recognized is recognized by their clothing. It is exterior person. We know that there is a delicate issue here. Like I said, that clothing on one hand is necessary. It is important. Remember, this is our protection. When when we go out today, it's very cold. We need clothing, right? You can't go out there and and uh, uh, and not be properly clothed. So clothing is very important. God said it's important, but don't allow your clothing to 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 uh to uh yes that's the word to give us pride so um uh, so so that's the uh that's the whole idea that's why you know the that's why the priests are given this clothing why because when like i said when if they're not in the mood to serve god when they start putting this on mm -hmm. like the wedding like the, the story of the mm -hmm. my, my illustration of the wedding you're not motivated to go and the, but the moment you start putting on your nice clothes ooh, i look good in this i so you you get excited so the same way god say put on the garments and you will have joy here you have joy yes, sometimes we don't feel like praying mm -hmm. but when we start praising and worshiping the mood changes amen so the same principle so that for this reason the 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 God created his clothing. Why? Because when he created the big dash or the Mishkan or the temple or the, the tabernacle, the Kohanim, the priests, were given special garments. Their garments, as I said, were expensive. It's not for personal glory. It is to serve Hashem in the Mishkan, in the place of holiness. Say it in the place of holiness. We are to wear this in the place of holiness. The respect of Hashem to wear is extraordinary garments. The Kohen Gadol, who is at a higher level. Why? Because he's expected to, uh, he's given additional garments because he expected to, to be above and beyond the regular priest. Again, he's, he is expected to be at a higher level of closeness to Hashem. And therefore, he's given extra privilege to wear ex this extra coat. So, so again, interesting insight for us. Because remember, these are our garments. This is what we wear. We should be wearing every day. Amen? Amen. Spiritually. So go to the next slide. So we're, we're going to talk about fire. Again, like I said earlier, there are three, say that, three, three. fires that God said, I want you to have it burning continually. Say it continually. Perpetually. Amen? And in the um, the halakha of the three fires done all on a daily basis again daily basis here a daily basis the significance of this commandment is the purpose of the sacrificial worship not only is it, is it, it it's not for the forgiveness of sin remember uh <coughs> deliberate sin can never be atoned in the altar right it's only those unintentional sin that's why when uh, Yeshua was hanging on the cross, what did he say? Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. So Yeshua was trying to, to wash away and say, these people don't know what they're doing. That's why they, they, they nailed me here. 
So he was trying to reverse the intentional sin to an unintentional sin. Amen? Why? Because there's no atonement for intentional sin. The only way you can, it can be atoned is through at the death of a righteous Yeshua. Amen? Only Yeshua can atone for our, the sin that we deliberately do. Amen? So therefore, the, there are two intentions regarding the sacrifice. The first intention is to bring people closer. Remember, God said, if you want to come close to me, if you want to, to bring, if you want to come close to me, korban means to come close, to draw near, bring a sacrifice. So, so, so a person who wants to draw near to Hashem will bring a sacrifice. Right? It's voluntary. It, it's, God is not requiring you to do it. Amen? Are you still with me? So what kind of sacrifice can we do? We were today, the, the, the sacrificial system was replaced by prayer. Amen? And, and, and our service to Hashem, our, our obedience. So his, his oneness and his providence in this is the first reason. That's why Adam and his son, Noah, brought sacrifices. They want to draw near, closer to Hashem. The only pagan idea to bring sacrifice to appease an angry God is coming from the pagan. But in Judaism, it has never been about appeasing an angry God. It's only if you want to draw close to him. Amen? So the first reason, of course, to draw near to Hashem is the main reason we bring sacrifice, to worship our maker, to draw close to him, and secondly, to humble ourselves before him. Amen? Mm. So, again, there are three significant fires. One next slide, yes. And the first one of course, the biggest one is the altar. The very first thing you see is the brazen altar. When you when you enter the, the Mishkan, the brazen altar is the first thing that will see you. And then when you go inside the holy place, you will see three uh, fires there, the light of the menorah and the incense altar. So let's talk about the, the brazen altar, which is the largest fire. The animal is put on the altar the moment that the animal is put on the altar, you cannot touch it anymore. In other words, you are not allowed to, to take it back. Once you <coughs> surrender it to God, you're not allowed to take it back. Amen? So, so, um, so what is that symbolism of? So again, every day. So every day, there's a lamb in the morning, which is representative of Isaac, and the lamb in the evening, the the. the the minta, the, the, the evening sacrifice. Remember, Yeshua, he died where? On the evening. He was the, 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 the minka lamb. He, he was the minka lamb. He was the, the lamb that was, that was that the evening lamb when the, the high priest will say, it is finished. Say that it is finished. So, so again, so God said, every day I want you to, to surrender. What does what God want us to surrender? He wants us to surrender our evil inclination, our selfishness, our pride, our arrogance, anything that's blocking God's blessing in your life. God said, I want to every day lay before me morning and evening. <laughs> Amen? Say that morning, morning and evening. Amen? Remember, God's blessing is always falling on us, right? But the problem is, our bodies, our spiritual bodies might not be able to absorb it or accept it. Why? Because there's something blocking in our life, whatever it is. That's why, you know, we need to, to rid ourselves with, with uh, regrets. We need to re rid ourselves with, with, with uh, unforgiveness. Whatever it is that's, that's in your life that's, you know, that, you know because at the, at the end, it's, not, it's impacting you, not impacting the person. Are, are you still with me? We need, to, we need to release ourselves so that the, the glory, the blessing of God will, 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 will be manifested, say it, manifested in our lives. Amen? So be careful. That's why it's, the burnt offering itself shall remain there. It is burned upon the altar. Careful not to bring a sacrifice that is inferior. It says here. So again, this is, this is, uh, uh, this is talking about talking about uh, our lives here. So chapter 29, verse 38, this is what you shall offer upon the altar, talking about different daily uh, uh, offerings. Obviously, there are many offerings, but all of the sacrifices, all the offerings point to Yeshua, but, but 
the one that God requires is the tamid. Say that the tamid. The lamb in the morning, say the lamb in the morning, symbolic of Isaac. And then the lamb in the evening, it's called Yeshua. Say that Yeshua. So the word, the, the, they, they call, in Hebrew, they call it the tamid offering, which means continually, say that continually or everlasting. If you add a dalet on lamy, or, or if you add, if you, uh, if uh, the, the lamy, the, uh, tamid, if you change the, the tab to Allah, it becomes lamid. You know what lamid means? Lamid means learning. See that learning. learning. That's why we, that's where we get the word Talmud. Say that Talmud mm. or Talmudim, disciple. Mm. Why? Why are we called disciples? Say that. Why are we called disciples? Why did Yeshua call us his disciples? Say that. I'm a disciple. You know why? He didn't call us. You are masters, did he? No. He calls us disciples. Say that he calls us disciples. He calls us disciples. Why? Because a disciple, say that a disciple, always learning. Are you still with me? In other words, we have not arrived. Say that we have not arrived. Every one of us, daily, say daily, we are learning. And God said, as long as you are my disciple, you will always learn. So learning. Ever learning. We are always learning. That's why he didn't say, you are my master. Because a disciple will always learn from his master. Amen. So that's what we are. We are rep God is saying, you know, daily, I want you to be a Talmud. I want you to, to, I want you to be my Talmudin. I want you to be always learning. See, always learning. You have not arrived. Say that we have not arrived. So the disciple is, 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 is growing in, in ever learning. The all offering, this elevation offering made on behalf of the community every morning, every evening. That's what they do. They so they, they, they gave this land in the morning. They, remember, that is the, the half shekel that they donated. That half shekel provided for the land in the morning. And the lamb in the so God said you had a part in that in that practice. Is that for every day, Pastor? Yes, every day. Wow. See that every day. Every day. Well, that's six hundred and uh, thirteen goes <laughs> in one year, uh, three sixty-five times two. <laughs> so every day, right? So again. At a very high level, the lamb offered in the morning is represented by Isaac and the final lamb, the real lamb of God, right? The real, the real, the real high priest, the, the real sacrifice, the, the, the real atonement is Yeshua. Amen? Amen. And of course, go on the next slide. The next light, I'm going to center on the light that burned uh, the daily offering. Uh, there's the, the two lamps. That's the first one. Go next time. Continually burning throughout your generation. And the oil of the menorah. So it says that uh, it says there it, in, in Exodus chapter 20, Pastor Elumbera read it to us, or we couldn't hear it, but it says that you shall command the children of Israel, you shall bring true pure oil beaten for the light to cause the lamp to burn, say that, to burn continually. So again, the menorah, they count the 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 priest or the Levites, they come in the morning. The priest come in the morning. Well, the Levites, uh, well, the, the, the more mostly the priest. The priest come in the morning to, 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 to fill the, the menorah with, uh, with oil, to check the wick, if the wick is still good. And then in the evening as well, he comes back to check, to make sure that there's enough oil to burn on the night. So there's oil. So, so again, why the menorah was placed in the holy place? Why is it? Why? Because remember, the, our light, our light comes from the word of God. And, and if you look at how the menorah is placed in the, in the holy place, it is facing the table of showbread. Say that? It, it's uh, facing the table of showbread. And then on the west side, it, it, it's, uh, it's pointing to the, to the holy place. So why is it pointing to the table of showbread? Because the, the showbread represents 
the word of God. Say it in the word of God. So we are to feed into the word of God. So the word, the word of God is, is uh, his Torah, right? So he's telling us that the menorah is supposed to bring light inside of, uh, and take it to the world outside. There is no, remember that the tabernacle was covered by a tent covering. There is no natural light coming in. Say that there is no light. Only the light that's, the, only the menorah light is the one that lights the whole except for it. Wow. Say wow. So the Lord is telling us that the light starts out in his presence. And from there, we take it out to the world. Amen? Amen. That's why we cannot use the worldly wisdom and bring it into his kingdom. It has to be his wisdom. We take it to the world. Amen? So the, the, the oil has many symbolism. It, it symbolizes honor, joy, favor. Remember when kings are anointed, they're anointed with oil. Of course, uh, pure beaten oil was the best quality. Why? Because uh, it is the first press. It's the first press. That's the extra, extra B oil. Mm. Right? And... Uh, it, it, it removes all the twigs, all the, uh, all the uh, leaves, all the dirt, it's pure oil. And it says there that it's considered the first press is considered the first fruit. Say that the first fruit. The first press of the olive, that is the pure oil. And of course, uh, we know that not only that oil symbolizes joy, it symbolizes the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Right, the spirit of uh, which is uh, oil. Uh, oil is is the Holy Spirit, who is the spirit of truth. Say that spirit of truth. Uh, in uh, the parable of the uh, the virgin, well, before that it says oil serves as a fuel for lambs. The parable of the ten virgins, the five wise and the five foolish. The foolish one uh, ones allowed the oil in their lambs to run out, Matthew chapter 25. Mm. The lamb is the symbol of the word of God. Say that the word of God. Mm. Have David wrote, your word, say that your word is a lamb unto my feet and the light unto my path. Psalm 119, 105. Solomon wrote, for the commandment is lamb and your law, say that your law is light. Proverbs 6, 23. The oil of the lamb is the indwelling spirit of God. God's spirit yeah. sheds illumination mm. on the laws and his commandments that mm. he has given us. That's why, you know, when, when, uh, when the time comes, when, when the Messiah will come, they said that there will, become, there will come a time when the truth will be taken out. Remember, uh, if, if people are not grounded in the truth, when the, when, when the Holy Spirit who, who, who will be taken out, the spirit of truth, when people try to find it, they're not going to find it. Mm. In Thessalonians, I think in Second Thessalonians, talk about, you know, when, when people reject the truth, what will happen? They will believe the lie, mm -hmm. right? The opposite of truth, of course, is lie. But when they reject the truth, the truth of God's word, a lot of people, you know, they're, they're not, they're not uh, reading, they're not studying, they're not learning the word of God, the truth. When they reject it, there will come a time when they will not anymore endure sound doctrine. They will not anymore. Why? Because they are so far from the truth. So uh, notice that the olive tree, see that the olive tree, the olive tree. Is, is one of those trees that you don't pick it one by one. What do you do? I like the grapes. The grapes you, pick. you have to shake it. See, you have to shake it. You see this? You know, uh, Eldor, you've been, you've been in Italy where yeah. you see that they're shaking and then there's yeah, this yeah. net that covers it. So they have this machine that shakes or, or manual, you use their hand to shake it. Yeah. Why is that important? Why? Because the shaking and the beating of the olive to harvest them and to extract its pressure oil is the type of life of God's people. The shaking picture is one of those, when, when you are shaken, Right? You are awake and say, wake up! When you wake up, somebody will say, wake up. Wake. No, you shake the person. Wake up! Yeah. And God is saying, his truth will wake you up. And God is saying, you know, when we're, when we're in a, when we're daydreaming, we say, 
Jesse, wake up. We shake, we shake the person. And God is easy. And his truth will shake us. Amen? We'll shake up his truth. And then when you wake up, oh, yes. Oh, I was just dreaming. I was in China. Now I, I'm, in, I'm in heaven now. <laughs> so God is saying, I want to wake you up from your slumber. I want to wake up you up from, from the things that are deceiving you. And finally, we have the next altar in me. The altar of incense. The altar of incense. Again, you shall make the altar of burnt incense upon the, uh, you build up an acacia wood. You're going to overlay with gold, verse 3. You shall put horns, you shall put a crown of gold around about it. Verse 6, you shall put before it, before the veil of the ark. So in front of the, the ark of the, of the Holy of Holies, the curtain, you will put the altar there. And you shall put, what is it? Iron shall burn incense, sweet spices every morning when he dressed the lambs. So when they're, when they're, when they're, uh, Checking the lamps when they're when they're fixing the lamps, they're fixing the twigs, adding oil. They're supposed to to light to burn the incense. And then when they do the, when they do it in the evening, what happened? They shall burn incense as well. So there's so that the the menorah and the incense are together. Say that they're together. Yeah, but, but you remember, there are eight spices. Say that, eight spices. Yeah. And one of them is a very bitter smell. Like it, it, it even makes your eyes cry when you smell it. Why? Because remember, the, prayer, the, the, the incense is symbolic of our prayer. Say that, our prayer. So God is saying, it's not only the sweet prayer that I want to hear. It's also those bitter prayers that come from the depths of our hearts. Yes. Amen? Yes. So God is saying, I accept all of that. I want you to come to me. Look, look at Revelation chapter, go the next time. Look at Revelation chapter 29. Another angel came and stood in the altar, the gold incense bowl. Okay, he had, uh, again, what's heaven, what, what is in heaven is on earth. What is in heaven is on earth. So he said he was given a large quantity of incense to add. These are the prayers. The incense is the cry of your people. Whether it's joyful prayer this morning or whether it's bitter cry. God said, I receive that. I want that. There's eight spices. I want all of them. God is saying, you know, so when, the, when, 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 when we pray to God, God is not only interested in the good news. He wants to know what is bothering you today. Amen. So, so again, the altar represents our prayer, the different fragrance, sweet, sweet, bitter, shooting, aromatic, intense. The different smell is a different emotion that Hashem welcomes in our prayer. It, like I said, in uh, you know the uh, the uh, notice that the incense altar is not visible to the public. Again. This is in the holy place. Say that in the holy place. Except when it is, uh, uh, when, when, when the curtain is open, in most cases, you can smell the fragrance and the fuel of the incense altar in our Mishkan keeping of our Torah, our charity. So everything that is part of our prayer, our prayer life is our not only our word, but our action, our studies, and all that. So all of that is part of, of uh, what Hashem wants from us. So the next slide I want to show you is there are three elements. Say that there are three elements, three elements. to make a fire. Yeah. You need the spark, the heat. You need the fuel, and you need the oxygen. Yep. So in a, in a, in a, in a wood firewood environment, the wood represents our physical action. Say that our physical actions. The oxygen represents the spiritual, the, the, the spiritual, uh, uh, our, our, our Torah studies, our prayers. Yeah. And then, of course, if you, if you have your action and your, and, and you have your study and your action, God will bring the spark. Say that God will bring the spark. Remember, when the, when the temple was inaugurated on the eighth day, what happened? 
they they had the the the, the, the sacrifice they had the wood but there was no fire they waited for the fire to come down from heaven and the sages tell us that when that fire came they that's the fire that 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 they used perpetually in other words when they traveled they took a piece of the coal and made sure that you know they kept it alive so when they got to the next site they used that same coal in other words the light was only the, the light was part somewhere from heaven above so when you when you put your when you put your uh, when you put your mitzvah keeping, your commandment keeping, and your studies and your prayer life, God said, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring fire." Say that I'm gonna bring fire into your life. Hallelujah. But you see, the problem with fire, you, 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 you've done barbecue before, you know those called that, not the the gas barbecue, the one that you have to to put coal, the charcoal one, the wood one. What happened? It requires a lot of work. Hey, a lot of work. Yeah. You have to constantly. That's why it's a daily. See, it's a daily. Our walk with God is not a weekly, every Shabbat, or it's not every feast, every yearly. Our walk with God is what? Daily. It's daily. And God said, you know, when you're when you're when you're doing this barbecue, what happened? You have to constantly make sure that there's enough coal, there's enough wind. You get your pie pie, or in, in, in or the pan in, in English, pie pie, your cardboard cardboard box, and start panning it. Why? There's a lot. It's, it, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. But the rewards are good, especially if you're barbecuing steak or burger. Veggie burger for those vegetarian there. Veggie burger, veggie hot dog. <laughs> so, so the one there, and you have to consider if you're when we, how many here you do barbecue indoor? Don't raise your hand. You always do barbecue where? So then you have to remember in the outside there is that it could rain, there could be snow, there could be strong wind. So you have to constantly guard your Fire. Say that God your fire. So the external elements are, are the things of the world that will try to choke your fire. Say that there's somebody there that wants to choke my fire. Amen. So the thing is telling us, you know, we need to, to be constantly keeping our flame of life burning. Say keep it burning. Remember, I told you that. On Judgment Day, say that on Judgment Day. Judgment. Just like when Isaac knew it was Jacob that he needed to bless, not Esau. What did he use? What was the final? The smell. What's the taste? Isn't it? And the smell. The smell. He tasted, he, he, he heard, he sounded like Esau or sounded like Jacob. He felt, oh, but he felt like Esau's hand. He tasted the savory meat that Esau prepared or can prepare. But the one thing that led him to the correct conclusion was what? Because his eyes was dim, failed him. His sense of taste failed him. His sense of hearing failed him. But one thing yes. never, smell. he smelled, tell he smelled smell. the field. He smelled the shirt. So look, look, look at this. Anybody who has barbecued in his life can tell you whether I'm, what I'm saying is true or not. If you have ever barbecued, when you got out of that place, you smelled what? You smelled smoke. No matter what clothes you're wearing, when you go back in, the smell of the barbecue or that thing you're barbecuing sticks to your clothes, your body. Amen? So God is saying, if you spend time with me in my fire, you will smell my fragrance. You will, when, when he sees you, you've been in my fire. You've been in my three fires. I can smell it. I can, you can fool me by your looks. You can fool me by you speak the Bible, Bible words. You even feel like, oh, you feel like a, 
a beautiful spot. There's something lacking in your life. God, Yeshua is saying, I cannot smell. I cannot smell the altar. I cannot smell the incense. I cannot smell the light. I cannot see the light. That's why Sister uh, Lucy read, you will know them by what? By the menorah fruit, the light that we generate. Amen? Amen. So yeah, Hashem is saying, He will know you and I by are we spending time with God. Amen? So, to conclude today, amen? Hallelujah. Before you stone me to death, Hallelujah. we are called by God to be a nation of priests, a holy nation. Why? To elevate the world for a chef. The more we spend time in the fires of the altars of Yeshua, the more he empowers us to bless others. Is the fire of Hashem engulfing your life today? Amen. 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 So, yeah. Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem. Father, thank you for reminding us that you have called us to be your high priest, not just your regular priest. Father, you're a high priest. Amen. So we have the privilege of wearing all the garments of the high priest. Amen. Why? Not for beauty, for ourselves, for our, for our praise, but so we can give honor and glory to your name, Father. May, may our lives smell your fragrance wherever we go. May our lives spread your fragrance to the people all around us. Father, we pray that Hashem will use each one of us for beauty and for splendor. So your name will be glorified in the earth. I pray for everyone that listen today and those that are in the video. May you use each one of us to be glory and honor to you. We ask in Yeshua the Messiah. And everybody said, Amen. 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 So you can end the recording now, Jesse.